Right now we are attempting to drive our vintage combi from the USA to Australia and we're currently enjoying trouble-free motoring in Europe. However, overlanding across continents isn't always straightforward. Eight years earlier and 10,000 kilometers to the west, we were struggling northbound through South America, sharing our tiny combi home with the hitchhikers and travelers that we met on the road. Two of those travelers in particular shared some of the most challenging and memorable adventures with us in South America. And now today in Germany, all these years later, we have the chance to meet up with them to find out what happened next. We are driving around the world. You guys are invited too, so subscribe and buckle up. It's one heck of a ride. This is me eight years ago, and this is Rad and Simone. We're standing at the foot of an erupting volcano in central Ecuador, trying to work out our next move. The volcano was grumbling loudly. On the way up there, the road had been blocked due to landslides triggered by the eruption, and traversing the volcano wasn't exactly straightforward. So we basically, we just turned up here. We were trying to drive up as far as we could to check out this volcano that we want to hike. They say it's erupting at the moment and we can definitely hear it in the background. It's an unbelievable feeling. But we've just come across this landslide here behind me, uh, which is blocked off the road. Brad and Simone had jumped into Capito, my South American combi, in Lima, Peru in 2012, along with our four-legged travel companion, who we named Alaska. The rough plan, and I use that term loosely, was to follow the coast up South America hunting out some of the most remote and unforgettable waves of our lives. Of course, I don't need to tell you that there's much more to an overland adventure than just waves. And together, we navigated without smartphones or GPS, following paper maps when we had them, or a compass and our instincts when we didn't, over the Andes Mountains and northbound through South America. That time was priceless for many reasons, but mostly because as the three of us were wandering north, a romance was blossoming between my two travel companions, one that continued to grow. And now, eight years later, in this small Bavarian village, Brad and Simone are still together, and Alaska and I are going to see them for the first time since it all began in <laughs> South America. I'm so excited. Here's that, Alaska. Here's that. Here's that. Here's that. Oh, no, it's mm -hmm. gone. <laughs> God, no. Oh, my God. Oh, I was nervous the whole day. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, so God. <laughs> Who is it? Who's that? Hello. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to see you too. You haven't changed a bit. You haven't? Oh, I got a little bit fat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so cute. <laughs> hey! Who would have thought that you'd have right? seen Alaska right? in Germany? Mine! Yeah. 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 I've seen lots of pictures of you. Brad and Simone also now have a Cocker Spaniel, five-year-old Mila. As sociable as Alaska is with humans, she can sometimes be a bit funny with dogs due to being raised on the streets of Latin America but it wasn't long before Mila and Alaska became best mates. After eight long years, we had a lot to catch up on, so we spent a few days at the lovely house that Brad and Simone have built together. Brad has always been a handy and skillful person, which was particularly useful in South America when our combi was beginning to die a slow death. Back in 2012, I really knew very little about how to keep my air-cooled V-Dub alive, 
and I was grateful to Brad for his ingenuity in helping us get out of some dodgy and very remote breakdown situations. Between Peru and Ecuador, we experienced three major engine failures within three short weeks. The final one at 9,350 feet above sea level on top of the Andes Mountains in Ecuador resulted in a complete engine rebuild and the three of us were living in our broken down combi in a mechanic shop for an entire week. That was our home for the last two days. There we shared some of our most challenging and testing times, but we also shared adventures together that we'll never forget, like driving into the Amazon jungle until the road ran out. Alaska, vamos. There we visited a jungle community where the children led us through their hidden hunting trails to discover the foods of the jungle. To this day, that remains one of my favorite adventures of my life. Feel a little bit familiar to your capito. Bit different, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the bed's obviously like narrower. It's not all the way across and you can stand up in it. You can stand <laughs> up. Yes, look at this. I even have like, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> not as big as your house, Simone. Yeah, but like my house doesn't travel around. <laughs> the downside, I can't move. <laughs> Dampers. Oh, lingo. Yeah, it's a bit older than it was, but like, it's. Uh... <laughs> With a light, yeah, you need the light because. I'm always in here working, aren't <laughs> yeah, exactly. I? Why do I remember this view so well? Bread and bending. Right, uh, bending over uh, the back. This, of the this seems familiar, right? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Do you yeah, miss that view, Brad? Hmm? Do you miss that view? <laughs> a little bit, no. secretly a little bit. <laughs> you think that we'd have seen, like Brad would have seen enough of this engine bay to last a lifetime. It's like, so hard to get in and work as well, and you're like, man, it's just so much, like, daily, wouldn't it? Just yeah, was, you could never guarantee that you would not be looking in there at something, yeah. fixing something. Yeah, no, whether it's electrics or... You weren't relaxed in the van, like as soon as we were driving, I was like, Oh, no, please drive like, further. And, like, <laughs> and I remember like one night I was driving and we just left a place where we fixed something. And we're like, we, like got all like new energy, like, yeah, let's do it. Forget about all. And then suddenly Brad is like, do you not smell that, Simone? Something is wrong. I'm like, oh, no. He was like, no, I can't smell anything. Leave the windows up. I don't <laughs> want to smell anything. <laughs> and we drove an hour after fixing the van. Going, Simone. Ooh, finally, I'm allowed to drive again. It's like breaking again. Yeah. <laughs> Never oh, before. You. Every time we've driven so far, it's broken about five minutes later. To be fair, it breaks five minutes after everybody drives, so it's not really your fault. Yeah, like some of the worst breakdowns was when you two guys were, was in the van, for sure. Because <laughs> we fixed the van and we did like um, like 30 kilometers or something, and then the engine after, was out after again. After Akito, when the woman. The first time was in Peru, somewhere. Since Brad and Simone left the combi in South America, they have both continued to travel frequently, which has produced much growth and reward. Simone has travelled far and wide, living and learning in both the Northern and Southern Hemispheres, with her experiences in India being particularly influential. In India, Simone studied to become a yoga instructor and now teaches in Germany and online as Drift Soul Yoga. She is soon to complete her osteopathy training and intends to open her own practice here in Bavaria. When not working, Simone is still road tripping and surfing around Europe when she can, exploring now in her own VW, a much more reliable but equally adventurous T6. Brad has continued to surf around the world and has braved more waves in Indonesia than anyone else I know. And I know a lot of traveling surfers. Yeah, okay, I'm a little jealous of that. He's also worked a variety of jobs, including learning to chef in a number of kitchens on both sides of the equator. These days, like Simone, Brad is also following his passions, which is filmmaking. He works with local companies here in Germany and also abroad, using his skills to create commercial content, short films and documentaries as foster media. You may also find him doing the occasional tech and gear review on YouTube here in his German studio. It's 
pretty solid, isn't it? Yeah. I need some cold shoe mounts to uh, change up the kind of mounting of the cameras in the combi. And rather than order it from Amazon, we'll just print it. Just yeah. print it. Just print it in Brad's studio. Yeah. yeah. No poses involved. Pretty sweet. Do you think they make a 3D printer that would fit in the combi? 12 volt. A 12 volt 3D, 3D printer. Hide it under the bed. You're gonna melt the filament with 12 volts. That's gonna be the challenge. So this is the Bavarian breakfast. It includes a white sausage. It includes a brezze, and it includes a white beer. A white beer. A white beer. Beer for breakfast. Beer for breakfast. So cheers. Cheers. Prost. 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 <laughs> It had been a long time since we'd been road tripping together in a combi and it was awesome to be back on the road with Brad and Simone. We got the best seat with the dogs. <laughs> At this time, it wasn't a long road trip. We were just heading to nearby Nordlingen. Okay, so we're in Nordlingen, a tiny historic town wall. And you have like five gates and only through those gates you can enter the historic town. In the middle you have like a massive church tower which is called the Danie and it's also like on a route that is called a, a romantic road and it leads all the way uh, down south to like a big castle like Neuschwanstein. So Nördling is one of these like really historic cities and I thought it's a very good uh, little place to show. The weather has changed dramatically overnight it has gone from 25 degrees celsius to about 10 degrees celsius so it's definitely autumn or fall as our american friends would like to call it and um, not exactly perfect lighting conditions for filming this beautiful historic german town but i tell you what it's absolutely gorgeous to be here amongst the rooftops and just having a look around town it's really cool i do love europe honestly I love the excitement of other cultures that are completely foreign to me, but it's really nice to see these historic European towns. This is the best post box I've ever seen. Post brief Carsten. The region in Bavaria where Simone grew up and where they now both live is inside the basin of a meteor crater, which is 25 kilometers in diameter and was formed millions of years ago. The meteorite left an estimated 72,000 tonnes of tiny diamonds in the crater after it impacted a local graphite deposit. The diamonds can now be found in the stone buildings of the area. Brad and Simone were just telling us that these lines on the streets here are painted when somebody gets married. It's like a local custom. So they paint a, a, z a zigzaggy line out the back of like a car dripping paint on the road between the two houses of the bride and the groom. It's pretty cool, I've not seen what? something like that before. Do you know what, I've seen this before, like in Australia, I've seen it a quite a few places and I always thought it was somebody that like spilt a paint can at the, you know, on the back of their ute and it's like, while they went off, it was like, I never knew it was a thing. I've seen it quite often in countries and I remember in Australia particularly because I always thought, like I couldn't understand why it was so common for somebody to like spill a paint can in the back of their ute and drive home not realising that paint was spilling at the back of their car. Is that a Bavarian thing? I'm not sure. Wow, there you go. Normally this time of year would be the world famous Oktoberfest, but in 2020 it has obviously been cancelled. So we tried to have our own version of Oktoberfest at home. Not half beers. In England we think these are called steins, yeah. but they're not, right? This is a stein. This is a stein. This? And what? Because it's made of stone. Ah, and stein means? Stone. Stein. And this is a what? Mass. Mass. Just, yeah. Mass. Stein. Beer. Beer. Normally when we go and get beers in England, we get tinnies, right? In a cardboard box. Yeah, uh, in Germany they do things a little differently. Yeah. Um, there's what, 24, how many bottles in 20? it? 20. 20. 20 bottles. 20. How much would this cost? They just put the price up to an extortionate eight euros 20 for that one, for that particular brand. Eight. It was six euros last year, or six fifty or something. Explains why um, 
Germans like to drink beer. Explains why you think. A nice way to do it as well, like the beers, are the bottles are recycled. Yeah, and they're empty, you take the empty case back, you put it into a machine, it gives you a ticket, and you take that ticket when you buy your next case and you get the money off of that one. It's a deposit system, which is, I can't understand why it doesn't happen in more countries. It's isn't there something brilliant, brilliant. Isn't there something about German beer where it's like got four ingredients or something? Yeah, you can't put anything else in it besides wheat, barley, malt and hops. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I'm called the Reinheitsgebot. Like it's literally a... Yeah, it's a, it's a law. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. I love how this is... Holding it wrong, you have to hold it like that because it's so heavy. I love how this has got so a, a lid. Like, what's the lid for? Uh, like fly protection. Fire keep protection. The, no, keep fly. The... Like, for like, if nothing like flies in, like bees or... <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I'm not doing it right, am I? I'm going to... <laughs> It was a real treat to see Brad and Simone again after so many years and to see that their love that began in our South American combi is still going strong and that they are both happy here pursuing their passions. Of course, we couldn't leave without enlisting Brad's help to fix something on this combi too, just for old time's sake. Hiya. So we riveted our broken 47-year-old windows, fixing That's... a leak just in time for the winter season. See you in another eight years or, or sooner? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, sooner than sure. Let's, let's, let's. From here, we're hitting the autobahn to find out just how fast this combi will go. We're in like our top speed and they're still flying past us. And we're meeting up with a couple who somehow managed to convince us to change direction and cross two countries that we didn't intend to visit. But that is a story for next time.